Before today's video, it might be a good idea for you to jump in my free Discord server. It's a great place to build and share your crypto knowledge and connect with like-minded, ambitious individuals. It's for people of all experiences, whether you're a crypto newbie or a seasoned professional. So jump in and network with me and an ever-growing community of intellectuals. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. The channel has been seeing some new subscribers lately, so if you are new here, very quickly to introduce myself, I'm a qualified financial advisor in real life, and I have been investing in crypto for over five years. Now, the past few days we've seen Bitcoin and Ethereum really rallying up, and if you're unaware as to why this is happening, it's due to the rumours of a potential Ethereum ETF being approved on the 23rd of May. Obviously, this has major, major impacts on the price of Ethereum going forward, but not only that, it also has some impacts on the rest of the altcoin market. So according to Eric, who's a senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg, the likelihood of the ETF being approved has apparently risen from 25% to 75%. Now, this has taken me by surprise. Initially, I didn't think they would get an approval in May. I thought it'd be coming later on in the year. And that's because recently there have been articles such as these ones. Uh, this is from Reuters last month saying that they expected uh, the SEC sorry, to deny spot ETFs. And Michael Saylor as well, recently as a few weeks back, said the SEC will classify Ethereum as a security and therefore deny them the Ethereum ETF spot as well. So yeah, it's, it's a massive, massive surprise. A lot seems to have been changing behind the scenes. And we can actually see that these top asset managers, such as Fidelity, BlackRock, scrambling to amend their spot ETF filing. So something big must be going on. So Standard Chartered, who are a bank, and also the shirt sponsor for Liverpool, if you know, you know, expect the Ethereum ETF to be approved this week. And they also predict a 15 to $45 billion worth of inflow in the first 12 months, which I actually reckon is pretty conservative, because if the greater macro conditions turn positive for us, we could see a lot more than this to come in and pump the market. So just to quickly point something out, when Bitcoin's ETF was approved back in January, we didn't pump instantly. As you can see, there was a big retracement actually before an explosive move up in the subsequent days and weeks. I'm not saying that this will happen, but keep it in mind as this could end up being a more buy the rumor, sell the news type event, at least in the very, very short term. And as always, we need to be prepared for the other eventuality as well. If the ETF does get rejected, in the short term, I'd expect the price of Ethereum and subsequently the whole altcoin market to dip as people react, as people normally do, irrationally and overly negative to the news. However, do not panic as it's only a matter of time before the ETF eventually does get approved. If anything, this would allow us and those who are sidelined a greater window in which to accumulate these solid, solid projects. So how high can Ethereum go? Well, last cycle it reached a price just under 5k, around $4,900. Naturally, this is the first level we would need to see it break. And after that, in all honesty, it's anyone's guess. And it could do what we saw Bitcoin do when it broke its high a few months back. It just kept rising and rising. In the longer term for this cycle, and from a psychological perspective, the golden number would be 10k. This is the level that people were predicting in the last cycle, and it's looking a lot more achievable this cycle. $10,000 per Ethereum would give it a market cap of around $1.2 trillion. Now, of course, this isn't out of the question, but it is very hinged on how well Bitcoin performs. Obviously, if Bitcoin gets to 100k, 120, 150k, whatever it may be, Ethereum is also going to absolutely smash any conservative estimates and absolutely fly. Just going to quickly look at some charts. Please keep in mind that there are people varying crypto experience watching, so you might be familiar already with these charts or you might be completely new. Now, you may have seen these tickers thrown around in the space. We've got total, total two, total three, and others. There's also total DeFi, but I barely see this one used. But uh, yeah, so total essentially is a chart showing the total market cap of the top one, two, five cryptos. Total 2 is the same, but it excludes Bitcoin. Total 3 excludes Bitcoin and Ethereum, and others excludes the top 10 cryptos. These can be pretty useful in seeing where we're at in the market and what sort of areas to look at. I don't want to overcomplicate the technical analysis too much, so I'll keep it brief, but uh, these are what the charts mean. So excluding Bitcoin, we can see that the total market cap in the previous cycle wicked to $1.7 trillion. Right now, we're about $1.15 trillion, so quite a long way away to reach that and even surpass it. So around 500, 600 billion dollars worth. So still got a long way to go, a lot of potential in this market. And uh, we should surpass it quite easily if this is to be the biggest bull cycle we're likely to see, you know, Bitcoin to break all time highs even further, reach six digits. We got ETFs coming in, lots of retail, etc., etc. Excluding Ethereum as well, which I have a feeling majority of the people watching are interested in. Again, we went over a trillion last time and right now we're about 700 billion. So around 30, 40% of his previous all time high, still a lot of runway ahead of us. But bear in mind, this only accounts for the top 125 projects in crypto. Uh, it's still an accurate tool we can use for altcoins in general. 
Bitcoin dominance is also a great chart to keep eyes on. Essentially, it does exactly what it says on the tin, depicts the dominance that Bitcoin has on the market as a percentage. Now, it's pretty simple to understand. The higher percentage, the more money is in Bitcoin and the less in alts. The lower the percentage, more money is being rotated into alts, more money is coming out of Bitcoin. Pretty simple to understand. So right now with the recent Ethereum pump, Bitcoin's dominance has reduced to 54%. Again, once compared to the last cycle peak when we were in alt season, which was November 2021 time, Bitcoin's dominance was in the low 40s range as a percentage. We can see here it was 40, 41, 42, ranging in this region. So if we're going off previous data, we still have a long way to go before we can classify ourselves as being in an alt season. This is just one of many metrics we will use together to paint a bigger picture. The dominance could fall higher or lower than last time. It's just something to watch if you don't already. Before we move on, look how dominant Bitcoin used to be. Damn, going up 70%. We've come a long way since then. So what does this mean for altcoins? Historically speaking, alt season comes after Bitcoin has peaked, as the profits get rotated from Bitcoin into Ethereum, then into other top projects, then we go lower and lower down the chain. I ran a poll in my Discord just to gauge when people believe that we'll see the Bitcoin peak. So 4% believe that we've peaked already, 10% believe that we'll see the peak in Q3 of this year, 23% believe that we'll see the peak in Q4 of this year, 36% believe we'll see it in the first half of 2025, 23% believe we'll see it in the second half of 2025 and 4% believe that we will see it in 2026 onwards. This is by no means accurate. This is just my community's opinions. Always interesting to see and analyze the opinions of many different people of varying experience and knowledge. But judging off this and my own sentiment, I always believe that Bitcoin would top at some point by the end of 2024, going into 2025, barring any black swan events. We are at the mercy of the greater macro conditions, however. Interest rates are still too high, promoting saving, not spending. People are paying back more on their loans and mortgages, so less disposable income for them to gamble away on crypto. We need the Fed to begin cutting the rates so we can see more capital flowing in. This is going to be in conjunction with US politics and the election year. I'm not from the US, so I won't be as well versed in this as others, but typically speaking, in election years, they're good for the markets. This ain't a political channel, so I'm not going to get into this whole Republican versus Democrats debate. But statistically, we can see that it's a positive return for the S&P 500, and we can expect similar sentiment in crypto. It even says down here, 19 of the 23 years provided positive performance. So overall, my closing opinion is the bigger risk is to not be positioned. And I repeat, the bigger risk is to not be positioned. I don't think anyone saw Bitcoin breaking its all-time high as early as it did this year. Genuinely, anything can happen in this market and you don't want to be caught with your pants down. Yes, I believe alt season will come somewhere between the end of 2024 and midway through 2025, but this could change at any time and I'm not going to sit around doing nothing. This is where the millionaires are made. The best time to invest was in the barren crypto wasteland of 2022 and 2023, like me and others were doing, but let's not dwell on the past. We can't change that now and significant gains can still be made. You are not too late to change your life forever. Dollar cost average into top projects. Look to accumulate and strengthen positions on dips. Don't go 100% in, keep dry powder on the side, either in fear or stable coins, USDT, whatever you prefer. And join my free Discord to interact with people in the same position to see exactly what me and my community will be doing in order to win this cycle. I got a video coming out next on my top pick in each of these strong upcoming narratives so be sure to subscribe and wait on that one. I wanted to keep this video fairly quick, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. The key takeaway really is that it's not too late but stay vigilant because the window of opportunity is closing. As always thank you guys so much for all the support you've been showing me, I really do appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoyed the video please like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next one, take care.